tonight on 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. Sean Locke, John Richardson, Kathy Burke, Kevin Bridges, Joe Lyson, Susie Dent, and Rachel Riley. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown, a show all about letters, numbers and conundrums. Did you know, for example, the dip in the bed left where you've been sleeping is called a staddle, unless you're Eamon Holmes, in which case the dip in the bed is more likely to be cheese and chive. <laughs> the word bisexual wasn't invented until 1890, and it was coined by psychiatrist Richard von Kraft following a very awkward conversation with his wife. <laughs> And during the 70s, the then editor of the Oxford English Dictionary deleted thousands of words with foreign roots. But to be fair, it's not the worst cover up from the 70s. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> okay, let's meet tonight's players. First up, it's John Richardson. I'm not saying John's boring, but after talking to him, you are warned not to drive or operate heavy machinery. <laughs> there was a little minute then where we made eye contact and you smiled and there was just a shred of humanity coming in there, wasn't there? <laughs> so sorry, I'm feeling very sleepy now. <laughs> <laughs> and John's teammate, Kathy Burke. Kathy famously played teenage boy Perry in Kevin and Perry Go Large. No one's played a needy, weird, socially awkward teenage boy so well since John Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> now he hasn't got a pen. Yay! <laughs> I'm not saying Kathy is working class, but she makes Danny Dyer look like Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Up against them this evening, it's Sean Locke. Sean says he only has three weaknesses on Countdown, the letters and the maths. <laughs> and joining Sean tonight is Kevin Bridges. <laughs> uh, Kevin's been on Cats Does Countdown twice and he's won both times, but that's all set to change tonight as he's on Sean's team. <laughs> Kevin has a degree in social sciences from Glasgow University, which means if his comedy career doesn't work out, he'll always have... Well, let's just hope his comedy career works out. <laughs> I don't have a degree in social sciences, Jimmy. I've never actually set foot in Glasgow Uni. <laughs> R really? You don't...? You... No. I studied social sciences at college. That means you're too thick for uni, but too, <laughs> too arrogant for a call centre. I was in there. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> Sean, you, you strike me as an, you're an incredibly happy man. <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret to your happiness? Simple things. A bluebell, the first bluebell of spring. <laughs> Coming home to a full mousetrap. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? <laughs> oh, what a lovely feeling. Okay? It worked. Well, my favourite thing must be closing three car doors, waving goodbye, saying, have a great time, and seeing your kids' faces in the back of the car, going, Mummy, why is Daddy doing cartwheels? <laughs> It's a lovely, lovely thought. Lovely um, uh, Kevin, you released an autobiography last year. Uh, what life experiences are you going to draw upon this evening? Eh, uh, I come from a big countdown family. It's quite... <laughs> I don't know why people have been so disrespectful. <laughs> my... No, my dad's actually got that clock tattooed on his back. <laughs> my mum's got count... Well, she realised she'd... Uh... <laughs> she only had eight knuckles, so she lost the first O. There. So that, that will drive me on, my family watching me, finally made it. OK, John, you're, um, you're very much known as the boring one on Countdown, which is... <laughs> which is quite an achievement in and of itself, but... <laughs> do you have a dark side? Can you do the first bit for me again? You're, well, you're known as the, the boring one on Countdown. Am I? Yeah, well, yeah. Am I? That's me. Susie, I'm afraid you've he's been, outdone you. Uh, <laughs> you've been... <laughs> you've been knocked uh, off your tedious I perch. <laughs> Who's the exciting one on Countdown, then? The... 
you're catching danger over there. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're... Fun. John, you've got kind of an alter ego. You, you know, you, do you have a dark side? Well, um, this is a true story, actually, Jimmy. Only yesterday, I turned right at a junction where it said no right turn. <laughs> and if the authorities of Harrogate are watching, then swivel on that. <laughs> Show me the video evidence, in which case I'll climb down immediately and pay any fine. <laughs> Uh, Kathy, you appeared on Celebrity Gogglebox. Now, if there were cameras in your actual living room, what, what would we see? Um, well, I'm part of a Baroque chorus, which a lot of people don't realise. So we do that in my living room, because there's really good acoustics in there. A Baroque chorus? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know you could sing. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be doing any singing this evening? No. <laughs> I don't sing publicly. But I do sing privately with my friends from the church. <laughs> There's me thinking John was the boring one. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what you thought I'd say that I have sex in my front room. Is that what you thought? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I had sex in my front room once. <laughs> this is quite a few years ago. This is in the last century. <laughs> <laughs> and it was in the olden days when you had answer machines before we had mobile phones. And I was having sex with this young man in my front room. Ooh, young man. Young man. <laughs> and the phone rang. I didn't want to answer it. I was enjoying myself. <laughs> and it was my agent who said, Kathy, they really need an, an answer whether you're going to be on an audience with Ken Dodd. <laughs> and and that, that's true. That, that happened to me while I was having sex in my while, front room. While there was a tickling stick present. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Did you go on Ken Dodd, an audience with Ken Dodd? I didn't. No, I didn't. I went on Parky, the carpets were filthy. <laughs> John, have you got a mascot this evening? Yes, of sorts, yes. I was going through some old stuff the other day, and what some people don't know this about me, but before I was a comedian, uh, I, I dabbled in magic. Are you a comedian? I didn't know that about you. <laughs> My first trick would be to make my teammate disappear. <laughs> well, did you genuinely used to do magic? Uh, yeah, this is, I used to wear this hat. I, uh, I was known as the impenetrable Rico. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> I brought this along, and I lost my old wand, so I thought, opportunity to make my own wand. Uh, <laughs> So then, when you're not doing magic, you have a bit of tidy up. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll do a few uh, through the evening, Jimmy. I'll, I'll sprinkle a bit of uh, magic dust uh, about the studio. Hi, uh, Kathy. Have you got a mascot? Something to bring you good luck this evening? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So this is my dog when she was a little baby. Oh, shenanigans. Shenanigans, what a great name. Great name for a dog. Best name ever given to a dog in the history of dog naming. Are you sure? My, yeah. do my dog's called Taxi. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> so in the park, I can go, Taxi! Yeah, it's very hard. <laughs> I've heard that quite a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Shenanigans. Beautiful. That was when she was about two months, three months. And here she is now. Yeah, lost her just before Christmas. She was brilliant, but what was a nightmare about her was she didn't like going on holiday. And she really didn't like coming up north. So I thought, ha ha, see? <laughs> I've got you here now. <laughs> but it's not all in there. I think that left paw is the bit that fitted in there. But... <laughs> Tried it as a seasoning. <laughs> Yeah, for, like, so sometimes you get like a soup and it's too sweet. Mm. This needs a bit of shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, have you got a mascot? Yeah. Now, I've got a mascot, but I've got something which I think will make most. I mean, I find my life very dull. I think most people's lives are pretty dull. You get asked questions and they're quite dull. And I've got a way, sort of a way to liven up the dullest questions. For example, if you're in a restaurant. And, uh, you know, in an Italian restaurant, the waiter comes over with a big pepper grind. He goes, pepper, sir. And you just go do this. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 I 
it. I love it. This just gives everything a sense of tension and excitement to it. You know, and if you ask me any question... Any you, are you doing anything nice this weekend? Makes everything seem a lot more exciting. The dullest questions, you know, like where, where's the coleslaw? <laughs> well, it should be with the ham because I put it in there. <laughs> Kevin, and if you don't have a good answer, I have an idea of how we can make it more interesting. Do you have a mascot? Give me some, Sean. <laughs> yes, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a mascot. It's a. Uh... Purple disposable lighter <laughs> and an aerosol can. <laughs> in my experience, when a disposable lighter and an aerosol can are introduced in a game of countdown, it does bring that degree of tension. <laughs> and I think it's something me and Sean could really capitalise on. Mm. And also, it could be used in a celebratory way, should mm. we get the conundrum. I would be willing to. Empty a few clips and fire, <laughs> fire a few rounds off. <laughs> so that's my mascot. Oh, okay. Over in dictionary corner, it's Joe Lyson. <laughs> okay. Now, Joe, you're from Birmingham. To your credit, you'd never know. <laughs> are there any words or phrases from the Midlands we should be aware of this evening? What are your favourite Midlands phrases? Uh, yes, I don't have the accent, but um, there are a few giveaways. For example, I say tooth rather than tooth. That's quite a brummy thing to say. And my friend from um, Liverpool, she found this very funny, and when she found out every time, she'd sort of go, What's that? And I go, It's my tooth. And she'd go, You sound fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Out of the two of us, I'm the weirdest sounding, defo. <laughs> Joe, you were voted the 57th hottest man in the world by Attitude magazine. Fact. <laughs> yes. Yes, Attitude magazine is gay literature. I was voted the 57th hottest man in the world by them last year. Brad Pitt is at 60. I'm hotter than Brad Pitt. <laughs> 57th, Joe? Yes, I'm 57th hottest. Man, it, how, out of how many? How many men are in the world? Just three, to, really put this, <laughs> three, to really put the man's achievement into context. 3 billion. Out of 3 billion? Yeah. Wow. Benedict Cumberbatch is at 69. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I would Joe, of course, it's Susie Dent. <laughs> it says here in the 80s, Susie collected rocks. And there's me thinking that being the resident lexicographer on Countdown was tragic. <laughs> Don't you remember pet rocks? Well, if you couldn't afford a real pet, you had a pet rock. <laughs> John, I said you were the most boring, but it's bloody close. <laughs> Susie, are there any accents you find annoying? Um, well, there are these polls, aren't there, of accents and how <laughs> intelligent... <laughs> <laughs> There's always these bloody polls. <laughs> <laughs> Susie's gone very UKIP recently. <laughs> Poles, yes. Poles, Poles. Polish people, yes. No, no, Poles. <laughs> and they ask people how intelligent they think uh, someone is, depending on their accent. And Brummy right. always comes last. And silence is always it always rates better than a Brummy accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's why I got rid of it. Did you have one? No, not really. <laughs> I was born better. <laughs> okay. And in charge of the numbers, it's Rachel Riley. Yay! Rachel is constantly confounding society's outdated sexist attitudes. First on Countdown by being a young, attractive woman who's also excellent at maths, and then on Strictly by being a young, attractive woman who's shit at dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, are there any maths like party tricks that you can do? Because people know you're great at maths, so do people yeah. ever go, right, can you do something impressive? Well, people do introduce me at parties saying I'm a mathematician, and I recently was at a party with loads of Americans and just realised quite how weird my job is. I think my party trick is just making people look confused and step away. Because you start by saying you're a mathematician, and then it's on TV, and then it's on a comedy show, and then I, I do times tables to numbers. <laughs> and at this point, I lose the room. <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. Sean, help me out. Come on, sound effects. Hit the pun. <laughs> He's not doing it. He's leaving me hanging. You're right. Some things you can't help. <laughs> OK, tonight the prize the teams will be competing for is this, the Countdown Pool Table. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Has 
anyone told you I'm the 57th hottest <laughs> man in the world? <laughs> OK, let's count down, everyone. Time for the first game. Sean and Kevin, you get the first pick of the letters. Why don't we do one each? OK. You do the vowels, I'll do the consonants. Yeah, but how do I know when... <laughs> <laughs> The excitement. <laughs> we don't know who's going to speak. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> right, I'll have a vowel. I was going to do the. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'll take a vowel as oh, well, please, Rachel. Yeah, right. I. Uh, yeah. Consonant, please. L. Another co consonant, please, Rachel. Now we need to get some consonants. Oh. I've got a word already, Sean. This is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, keep going. Keep, let's get more white off going. Yeah, uh, yes, come on, it's going well. Have another consonant, please, Rachel. G. What are you going to go for? I'm going to go for a vowel, please. I think we need to kill it with e. the vowels. Yeah. Maybe lay off the vowels. And then just the rest in consonants, please, Rachel. F. P. N. And for the first time today, here is the countdown clock. Cool. I'll help you take off your shoes. Take off your dress Yes, yes, yes You can leave your hat on You can leave your hat on You can leave your hat on Sean, how many? Seven. <laughs> seven. Uh, John? Uh, seven. Oh, Kathy? Six. Hmm. I wasn't really concentrating, to be honest. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, Kevin, I've got a five. <laughs> OK, you've got a five. What's your five? Eh. Uh... <laughs> oh, Pedro. Oh. It's Pedro there. And then I was going to put... If there was a second G, I was going to go for pagering. He won't, he won't, as in he won't stop pagering me, if you will. <laughs> if you were being stopped in the 80s, yeah. that was a common sentence. <laughs> OK, oh, Cathy, you're six. I buggered up, I thought there were two eyes. <laughs> OK, what's your seven, John? Well, it's written down, but not, not here. Here I've just written impenetrable. <laughs> <laughs> so what, where, where's got where's your... Deck of cards here, Cathy. <laughs> Impenetrable. <laughs> they fucking are as well. <laughs> <laughs> You'll confirm that these are just ordinary cards, look. Yep. Uh, and there's one missing there, if you can see uh, there. Oh, yes. The King of Clubs. Yep. Which was my nickname when I used to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the King of Clubs is a good friend of mine, and he's a big fan of Countdown, Jimmy, and if I don't keep an eye on him, uh, he's trying to steal the countdown teapot. Uh, so if you perhaps lift up the countdown teapot, James, ah. you'll find a card. There is a card, OK. Perhaps you'd like to show the audience what the card is. It, it is... it is... No way. The and on the card. reverse of the card... <laughs> on the back of the card, you'll find a seven-letter word, Jimmy. <laughs> Um, Impenetrable! <laughs> uh, what's your seven, Sean? Right. Um, <laughs> Susie, if yeah. you turn the dictionary <laughs> to page 132... <laughs> <laughs> no, mine is yeah. plainer. Plainer, very good. OK, well, seven points for both teams. <laughs> Joe, Susie, could they have done any better? Yes, yeah. only slightly. <gasps> we found a couple of eights. Pearling. Mm -hmm. Dive for pearls. And then, I don't know how to pronounce this one, fin finagler. Finagler. Finagler, finagler yeah. which is to uh, finagle. To finagle, to deceive. So John is the uh, consummate finagler. <laughs> OK, so at the end of that, both teams have seven points. <laughs> On to our first numbers round. OK, John and Cathy, your turn to pick the numbers. You pick them, John. All right. <laughs> Two big ones. 
and four small ones. Thank please. you, John. Two large ones, four little ones. And the first numbers game today is three, seven, two, five. And the big ones, 25 and 100. And the target, 613. So the target, 613. Your time starts now. So the target was 6.13. Kevin, did you get it? Thanks, so, mate. Come Thanks back to me. Good. Leave me at the very end. <laughs> uh, Sean, did you get it? <laughs> you sort of. I got, to, I got to about 600 and... I think it's 618 I'm on. 618, OK. Uh, John, did you get it? I got 614. 614, you're very close. Cathy, did you get it? No. <laughs> it's a more honest answer than the others. That's I mean, right. they could have all said no. <laughs> Um, Kevin, how, how, how are you progressing? Um, <laughs> I've got nothing written here, but I'm going to go for it. OK, go for three it. Three minus two is one. Three minus two, one. Uh, I'm You're further away than when you started with a three. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm trying to go 24 times 25, which will give me six, two, f six to the five. 600. Look. 600. Then I just need to find 13. It'll be easy. <laughs> Should we agree you didn't get it? I dealt the dream. I try to entertain the fans, and if that makes me... <laughs> A loser here, then I'm sorry. You can still do it with, with that with that start. She, <laughs> Rachel and I are playing on a different level here. <laughs> right, so one minus twenty five is twenty four. Was that the next step? Yeah. See, back the fuck up, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rachel, just do the next sum and then I'll take it from there. Okay. How did you do it, John? Uh, 100 minus 25. 100 minus 25 75. 5 plus 3 is 8. Yep. Multiply them together. 600. And then 7 twos are 40. And 7 twos. Yep, one away. <laughs> Seven points to John's team. So, uh, Rachel, how could it be done? Do you want this way? Yes, yeah, please. this way, yeah. Yes. Okay, um, if you add. 24 add 100 for 124, times it by 5 for 620, and take away the 7. <laughs> yeah. OK, time to go across to Dictionary Corner. Joe, what have you got for us? Uh, so I spend a lot of time writing letters, and I found the email address of the CEO of Network Rail. He owns all of the train stations in the United Kingdom. So I genuinely wrote this. Dear Sir... <laughs> I am contacting you regarding an urgent emergency at London Euston. Last night I enjoyed a prawn masala and garlic naan from a curry house in Peckham. I had concerns about the hygiene standards of the establishment, but was blinded by my hunger and chose to ignore the warning signs. <laughs> Thus today I have been, as my father would say, pissing through my ass. <laughs> The reason this is relevant to you is that I currently find myself at London Euston train station without 30 pence. <laughs> Some of you might be ahead of me on this. As your toilet facilities demand this fee and I'm about to explode, I am left in a most perilous position. I have managed to find some privacy and I'm currently perched behind a bin <laughs> on one of the platforms near Deliche de France, desperately trying to hold in what I anticipate to be a towering, cascading waterfall of post-Masala sadness. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you might be able to lend me some of your £675,000 salary. Then I put in brackets, that would buy you 2.25 million train station <laughs> toilet trips, you lucky bugger. <laughs> To avoid this impending atrocity, either that or perhaps stop charging for what most people would consider to be a basic human right. Regards, Joe Lysa, I also put, P.S. Should you lend me the money, I would be delighted to invite you for tea at my home to say thank you, but please give me plenty of notice, as I'll need to install a turnstile outside the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I put, P.P.S. You're literally taking the piss. <laughs> The scores at the moment, Sean and Kevin are on seven, John and Cathy are on 14, and here is your teaser. The words are lick pits. The clue is, get this round your mouth. That's lick pits. 
get this round your mouth. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. The answer to the teaser. The words were lick pits. The clue was get this round your mouth. It was, of course, lipstick. <laughs> so, uh, John and Kathy are in the lead. Time to mix things up a little bit. They've been playing in teams so far, but this game is just for Kathy and Sean. So, Kathy, oh. your turn to choose the letters. I'll have a consonant, please. Thank Rachel. You, Kathy. D. And I'll have another consonant, please. G. And I'll have another consonant, please. T. I'll have another consonant, please. <laughs> L. Consonant, please. <laughs> T. Yeah, I have a consonant, please. <laughs> T. And then For I'll the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> and then three, three vowels, please. O. Mm. Oh, dog. Oh. <laughs> you. And another O. Dog poo. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and your time starts <laughs> now. Is dog poo in the dictionary, uh, Susie, just out of curiosity? Not as one word. <laughs> Kathy, what have you got? Four. Sean, what have you got? Five. Oh, well, let's hear your four, Kathy. Pout. Pout. Sean? Lotto. <laughs> Lotto. Is Lotto in the dictionary, Susie? Well, it's used a lot. Will you lads keep it down? <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, kick off. You're the one that took ages. <laughs> Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's in the dictionary, yeah. Lotto? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. I've got to go. Yeah. So that's five. Could they have done any better? Joe, Susie? Uh, no, not really. I've got some lovely hoisin that'll go with them later. <laughs> um, <laughs> gloop. Gloop is, uh, is another five, but that's all we've got. So as five is as good as you could do. Yeah. Well five done. points for Sean. Well done. At the end of that, Sean and Kevin have 12, John and Kathy have 14. Yeah. 14. Close. <laughs> right, now time for Kevin and John to go head-to-head. -head. Kevin, your turn to pick the numbers. One from the top. One from the top. Is that what I just said, Jimmy? <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to wind my neck in, I'm sorry, dude. You go for your life. And one more from the top. <laughs> That's for you, Jimmy. <laughs> and four from the bottom, please. Right, one, uh, two large and four little. And this time the little ones are nine, two, three, and seven. And the big ones, 75 and 50. And your target, 434. And your time <laughs> starts now. So the target was 434. Did you get it, Kevin? Yes. John, did you get it? Yes. Or rather... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, well, Kevin, how did you get it? Uh, 75 times... Uh, three, well, three times two first. Three times two, six. Six times 75. 450. And then it's <clears> easy, <throat> nine and sevens. 16 on it, take it away. Yeah, perfect. That's four, three, four. Perfect. <laughs> Did you write it down, John? Well, Susie, if you look under your desk... Oh, no, I'm Perhaps trying. you'll find a beer and a glass. <laughs> <laughs> now, you'll investigate the beer. There's nothing weird about the beer. No. Nope. There's nothing weird about the glass. No. Nope. Could you bring them over to me? 
<laughs> and you'll see nothing up my sleeve at all. Just pop them there for me. I've always wanted to be a magic assistant. Thank you. Am I done? Yes, thank you. <laughs> I did it the same way, I just wanted a beer. <laughs> Impenetrable. <laughs> you got it as well, did you? Yeah, I did the same, yeah. You're not going to check that? Well, can we... Do you want me to check it? Should I check yeah, it? Yeah, if you could check it, yeah. He's just got some numbers all, and some symbols. That's a load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he had it. OK, so that's ten points to both teams. <laughs> the scores at the moment are Sean and Kevin are on 22, John and Cathy are on 24, and here is your teaser. The words are bat flick. The clue is it takes a lot of practice. That's bat <laughs> flick. It takes a lot of practice. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. The answer to the teaser, the words were bat flick. The clue was it takes a lot of practice. It was, of course, backflip. <laughs> OK, before we go on, it's time to give Rachel a special assistant. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Helm. Take my dick out and then I'm gonna swing it around. <laughs> you can smell it in the air. I'm gonna tear your clothes off and toss them all about on the ground. I'm gonna wear you tonight. All right, all right, all right. Love you with all my might. <laughs> your plans and take the phone off the hook maybe switch up the lights and throw away your new book go and lock all your doors and wash yourself with a flannel put the terror in you but baby don't change the channel so lay back and relax and i'll fix you a drink hold myself down and lace and wash my balls in the sink yes, in the beat. Then I'm up to your knees, then I'm up to your thighs You'll be begging me please, gonna love you so hard Gonna love you so long, if you're not... Oh, God! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess I loved you tonight! <laughs> all right, all right, all right So, baby, pull up your tights! <laughs> I loved your brains out tonight, 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 tonight. I really loved you too. <sighs> Night. Come on. Two. Nick Helm. Hello, Jimmy. <laughs> Hello, Kathy. <laughs> Hello, John. Hello, Hi, Sean. Yeah. Hello, Kevin. Hi, right, Joe. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say hello to Susie. Uh, uh, I didn't realise I'm actually allowed to speak to Susie. Uh, what with all the legal things that are going on between us at the moment. <laughs> uh, all I can say is, uh, don't shit where you eat. <laughs> and so I'm moving on to uh, fresher pastures. Um... <laughs> Have you said special help? <laughs> Okay, don't make this weird. <laughs> OK, on with the game. <laughs> Sean and Kevin, your turn to choose the letters. I'm going to have an A, please. Uh, vowel. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I just stay on this side? You yeah, stay you on that side. you do whatever you like. I mean, okay. do it as normal. I mean, I've, right. no, I've never been this I'll just... I'll just sit down. A. Another vowel, please. OK. OK. O. Right, Sean. Yeah? Um, what is your... Favourite perfume? Uh, Diptyque 34. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what, 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 what's, what's your favourite perfume, Susie? Uh, Ralph Lauren. I've got, got some Ralph Lauren. Oh. <laughs> uh, which um, I was going to give to you, actually. <laughs> uh, is anyone else taking notes? Because I'm watching a master at work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Consonant, consonants. Please. Let's just it'll be sensible. S. Yes. Okay. And another consonant. T. Another consonant. V. And another consonant. 
Sexual tension is unbearable. <laughs> Vowel, another vowel. Okay. I. Okay. I. And a consonant. Share the workload together. Yeah, that's nice. It's working out. Good team. Ah. Oh. And your time starts now. Sean, how many letters? <laughs> Six. <laughs> Kevin? Um, I rescue eight. John, what have you got? Show me your eight and I'll tell you. <laughs> you got an eight? I'll try an eight, mate. Oh, right. high stakes game. Kathy, what have you got? Six, forget it. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, what's your six? Uh, voters. Voters? Excellent. Sean? Strive. Strive is your six. Do some work. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you guys strive, could maybe strive. keep your hands yeah. off each other for a second. <laughs> uh. <laughs> John, your eight? Uh, troviest. As in... Of, of all the troves, it was the most trove-like. <laughs> Yeah. The troviest. It's a yeah. very magic yeah. word, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. think you need some magic for this one. <laughs> so, Kevin, what are you going for? Toastier, as in warmer. It's toastier. Toastier is brilliant. Troviest is not a word, John. What More a magic, fucking I'm world. Afraid. Yeah. <laughs> That's eight points to Kevin. There we go. Nice hey. <laughs> Susie, Joe, could they have done any better? Don't think more so. eights, more eights. What yeah. other eights were there? Rotative. R rotative. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So at the end of that, Sean and Kevin are in the lead with thirty points. Time to go across to Dictionary Corner once again. Joe, what have you got for us this time? Uh, well, Jimmy, I've noticed a, a growing trend in social media of it's normally very attractive, very successful, famous women posting what I call bullshit quotes to social media. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cheryl Cole does this a lot. She posts uh, quite a few, and they're always in like a nice font on a seascape background. A good example, she posted one which was, your attitude is your altitude. It determines how high you fly. And that was by Anonymous. <laughs> There's a reason no one's claimed authorship of that. <laughs> but, um, Cara Delevingne is the worst for this. She's a model. If you don't know who she is, just imagine an eyebrow. That's all you need. Um, <laughs> just floating around celebrity parties. And she posts minimum one a day, and they make me so livid that I've had to start commenting on them. So she posted one which was listen and silent are spelt with the same letters. Think about it. I thought about it for ten seconds and commented, also tinsel. Think about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> One, one further, I've set up my own hashtag. It's very modern. It's hashtag bullshit quotes I just made up. Um, <laughs> I have two rules. I can't have thought about the quote for longer than ten seconds, and then I post it, whatever it is, tagging Cara Delevingne, Cheryl Cole, Laura Whitmore, the TV presenter, and sometimes Jamila Jamil. And it'll be things like, don't cry when it rains, the weather is weeping for us all. <laughs> I think just made it up in ten seconds means nothing. Well, my favourite one I've posted, which is, um, life is like a box of chocolates. It doesn't last long if you're fat. <laughs> well, the scores at the moment, Sean and Kevin have 30, John and Cathy have 24, and here is your final teaser. The words are bald nads, and the clue is a dodgy area. That's bald nads, a dodgy area. See you after the break. Welcome back. The answer to the teaser. The words were bald nads. The clue was a dodgy area. It was, of course, badlands. <laughs> OK, time for our final letters game. John and Cathy, your turn to choose. Val, please. I'm filled with confidence by the <laughs> doodle of a face you've drawn on your paper. Val? <laughs> hey. uh, Val? Yeah. Rachel? Nick? Um, what is your favourite wine? Um, Chateau Neuf de Pape. Oh! <laughs> 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 what, 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 what's your one, Susie? Um... 
Malbec. Malbec? Well, like that? Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's your just... favourite flower? <laughs> What's your favourite flower? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite flower? A snowdrop! <laughs> What's your favourite food? Prawns. Prawns! What's your... Curry! There you go! <laughs> That's what's Where going would on, you right? go if you could go anywhere in the world? Uh, Fiji. Oh, yeah! Berlin via New York! There you go! <laughs> Have a nice time! Yeah! Leonardo! Yeah! The leader of the gang! Right? That's your favourite? <laughs> this could have been you! <laughs> you could have had everything, Susie! <laughs> You some chocolate digestive. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Look after her, Joe. <laughs> and a consonant, please. <laughs> uh, oh. Consonant, please. T. And a consonant, please. Okay. L. And a vowel. Nick, can you help? Oh, Just shove oh. it up there. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Consonant, please. Leave it! Consonant, please. I'll let you handle this. D. And a vowel, please. Okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> I. Thank you. Oh, this is shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and your time starts now. John, how many? Five. Kathy, how many? Four. Kevin? A five. <laughs> a rescue five. Sean, have you got a five by any chance? I have, Jimmy. Yeah, I, I, I thought, I think it might be the same one that Kevin just got when he looked at it. <laughs> Kathy, you're four. Lard. <laughs> Lard. It's a beautiful word. Um, John? It's, um, this might be a brand name, so it might not be in, but there's a bubble bath which has got a sort of stimulative for ladies that when they go under the water, it... and it's called Radix. <laughs> Radix, yeah. I think it may be a brand name, though. I'm not sure whether it'll be in there, yeah. Radix? Radix oh, wow. is the source or origin of something in or out of the bath. Oh. Very good. Shut up! Oh. <laughs> it was in there! Yeah. Wow. Sean, what have you got? Trail. OK. And Kevin, your masterpiece. Uh, trail, but with the R upside down. <laughs> That's in Russian. <laughs> okay, so uh, Joe and Susie, could they have done any better? There's a six, wasn't there? Yep. Radial. Radial. Did you add that? Of course. There is a Birmingham term, which is uh, lardy, which is, when pronouncing the Brummie term, just the name for a posh woman. Lardo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so five points to both teams. OK, so Sean and Kevin have 35, John and Kathy have 29. It's all to play for. Fingers on buzzers, it's time for today's crucial countdown conundrum. Your time starts now. <laughs> John. Megawatts. Let's have a look and see. Oh. <laughs> he snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. So the final scores are Kevin and Sean have 35, but the winners, John and Kathy, with 39. <laughs> so congratulations, John and Kathy. You're now the proud owners of this countdown pool table. Please. studio audience and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>
More of that next Friday at the same time. Top cop James McAvoy versus Mark Strong. Alpha males in the thriller Welcome to the Punch, Tuesday at 9 on Film 4. But coming up, comedian Ramesh Ranganathan gets chatty with Alan Carr. Billy Piper and Charlie XCX all enjoying his games next. Got Where's a your... deck of cards here, Cathy. <laughs> <laughs> Impenetrable. <laughs> they fucking are as well. <laughs> <laughs> You'll confirm that these are just ordinary cards, look. Yep. Uh, and there's one missing there, if you can see uh, there. Oh, yes. The King of Clubs. Yeah. Which was my nickname when I used to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the King of Clubs is a good friend of mine, and he's a big fan of Countdown, Jimmy, and if I don't keep an eye on him, uh, he's trying to steal the Countdown teapot. Uh, so if you perhaps lift up the Countdown teapot, James, <sighs> you'll find a card. There is a card? OK. Perhaps you'd like to show the audience what the card is. It, it is... it is... Norway. The and King on the reverse of the card... <laughs> on the back of the card, you'll find a seven-letter word, Jimmy. <laughs> Um, Impenetrable! <laughs> uh, what's your seven, Sean? Right. Um, <laughs> Susie, if yeah. you turn the dictionary <laughs> to page 132... <laughs> no, mine is yeah. plainer. Plainer, very good. OK, well, seven points for both teams. <laughs> Joe, Susie, could they have done any better? Yes, yeah. only slightly. We found a couple of eights. Pearling. Mm -hmm. Dive for pearls. And then I don't know how to pronounce this one. Fin finagler. 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 Finagler, yeah. which is to uh, finag. To finagle, to deceive. So John is the uh, consummate finagler. <laughs> okay, so at the end of that, both teams have seven points. <laughs> On to our first numbers round. Okay, John and Kathy, your turn to pick the numbers. You pick them, John. All right. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Two big ones. And four small ones. Thank please. you, John. Two large ones, four little ones. And the first numbers game today is three, seven, two, five. And the big ones, 25 and 100. And the target, 613. So the target's 613. Your time starts now. So the target was 6.13. Kevin, did you get it? I think so, mate. Come Thanks back to me. Good. Leave me at the very end. <laughs> uh, Sean, did you get it? You <laughs> sort of. I got, to, I got to about 600 and... I think it's 618 I'm on. 618, OK. Uh, John, did you get it? I got 614. 614, you're very close. Cathy, did you get it? No. <laughs> it's a more honest answer than the others. That's I mean, they right. could have all said no. <laughs> um, Kevin, how, how, how are you progressing? Um, <laughs> I've got nothing written here, but I'm going to go for it. OK, go for three it. Three minus two is one. Three minus two, one. Uh, I'm You're further make... away than when you started with a three. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm trying to go 24 times 25, which will give me six to... F six to five? 600. Four? 600. Then I just need to find 13. It'd be easy. <laughs> Should we agree you didn't get it? I dealt the dream. I try to entertain the fans. And if that <laughs> makes me a loser here, then I'm sorry. <laughs> do it with, with that stop with that start. She <laughs> Rachel and I are playing on a different level here. <laughs> right, so one minus twenty five is twenty four. Was that the next step? Yeah. See? Back the fuck up, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rachel, just do the next sum and then I'll take it from there. Okay. <laughs> How did you do it, John? Uh, hundred minus twenty five. One hundred minus twenty five seventy five. Five plus three is eight. Yep. Multiply them together. 600. And then seven twos are 40. And seven twos. Yep, one away.
tonight on 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. Sean Lock, John Richardson, Kathy Burke, Kevin Bridges, Joe Lyson, Susie Dent, and Rachel Riley. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown, a show all about letters, numbers and conundrums. Did you know, for example, the dip in the bed left where you've been sleeping is called a staddle, unless you're Eamon Holmes, in which case the dip in the bed is more likely to be cheese and chive. <laughs> the word bisexual wasn't invented until 1890, and it was coined by psychiatrist Richard von Kraft following a very awkward conversation with his wife. <laughs> And during the 70s, the then editor of the Oxford English Dictionary deleted thousands of words with foreign roots. But to be fair, it's not the worst cover up from the 70s. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> okay, let's meet tonight's players. First up, it's John Richardson. I'm not saying John's boring, but after talking to him, you are warned not to drive or operate heavy machinery. <laughs> there was a little minute then where we made eye contact and you smiled and there was just a shred of humanity coming in there, wasn't there? <laughs> so sorry, I'm feeling very sleepy now. <laughs> <laughs> and John's teammate, Kathy Burke. Kathy famously played teenage boy Perry in Kevin and Perry Go Large. No one's played a needy, weird, socially awkward teenage boy so well since John Richardson. <laughs> <laughs> now he hasn't got a pen. Yay! <laughs> I'm not saying Kathy is working class, but she makes Danny Dyer look like Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Up against them this evening, it's Sean Locke. Sean says he only has three weaknesses on Countdown, the letters and the maths. <laughs> and joining Sean tonight is Kevin Bridges. <laughs> uh, Kevin's been on Cats Does Countdown twice and he's won both times, but that's all set to change tonight as he's on Sean's team. <laughs> Kevin has a degree in social sciences from Glasgow University, which means if his comedy career doesn't work out, he'll always have... Well, let's just hope his comedy career works out. <laughs> I don't have a degree in social sciences, Jimmy. I've never actually set foot in Glasgow uni. <laughs> R really? You don't...? You've... No. I studied social sciences at college. That means you're too thick for uni, but too, <laughs> too arrogant for a call centre. I was in there. <laughs> Sean, you, you strike me as an, you're an incredibly happy man. <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret to your happiness? Simple things. A bluebell, the first bluebell of spring. <laughs> Coming home to a full mousetrap. Oh, <laughs> Isn't that lovely? <laughs> oh, what a lovely feeling, eh? It works. Well, my favourite thing must be closing three car doors, waving goodbye, saying, have a great time, and seeing your kids' faces in the back of the car, going, Mummy, why is Daddy doing cartwheels? It's a lovely, lovely thought. Lovely. Um, uh, Kevin, you released an autobiography last year. Uh, what life experiences are you going to draw upon this evening? Uh, I come from a big countdown family. It's quite... <laughs> I don't know why people have been so disrespectful. Yeah, my... <laughs> no, my dad's actually got that... <laughs> Susie's gone for a UKIP recently. <laughs> Poles, yes. Poles, Poles. Polish people, yes. No, no, Poles. <laughs> and they ask people how intelligent they think uh, someone is, depending on their accent. And Brummy right. always comes last. And silence is always, it always rates better than a Brummy accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's why I got rid of it. Did you have one? No, not really. <laughs> I was born better. <laughs> OK. And in charge of the numbers, it's Rachel Riley. Yay! Of course. Of course. Rachel is constantly confounding society's outdated sexist attitudes, first on Countdown by being a young, attractive woman who's also excellent at maths, and then on Strictly by being a young, attractive woman who's shit at dancing. <laughs> Rachel, 
are there any maths like party tricks that you can do? Because people know you're great at maths. So do people yeah. ever go right? Can you do something impressive? Well, people do introduce me at parties, saying I'm a mathematician. And I recently was at a party with loads of Americans and just realised quite how weird my job is. I think my party trick is just making people look confused and step away. Because you start by saying you're a mathematician, and then it's on TV, and then it's on a comedy show, and then I, I do times tables to numbers. <laughs> at this point, I lose the room. <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. Sean, help me out. Come on, sound effects. Hit the pun. <laughs> He's not doing anything for me hanging. You're right, some things you can't help. <laughs> OK, tonight the prize the teams will be competing for is this, the Countdown Pool Table. <laughs> Has anyone told you I'm the 57th hottest man in the world? <laughs> OK, let's count down, everyone. Time for the first game. Sean and Kevin, you get the first pick of the letters. Why don't we do one each? OK. You do the vowels, I'll do the consonants. Yeah, but how do I know when... <laughs> <laughs> That's the excitement. <laughs> we don't know who's going to speak. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right, I'll have a vowel. I was going to do the... <laughs> a. A. I'll take a vowel as oh, well, please, Rachel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. Consonant, please. L. Uh, another consonant, please, Rachel. Now we need to get some consonants. Oh. I've got a word already, Sean. This is... <laughs> um, <laughs> um, keep going. Keep, let's get more letters going. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, come on, it's going well. <laughs> Have another consonant, please, Rachel. G. What are you going to go for? I'm going to go for a vowel, please. I think we need to kill it with e. the vowels. Yeah. Maybe lay off the vowels. And then just the rest in consonants, please, Rachel. F. P. N. And for the first time today, here is the countdown clock. I'll help you take off your shoes. <laughs> Sean, how many? Seven. <laughs> seven. Uh, John? Uh, seven. Oh, Kathy? Six. Hmm. I wasn't really concentrating, to be honest. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, Kevin, I've got a five. <laughs> OK, you got a five. What's your five? A. Uh. <laughs> oh, Pedro. It's Pedro there. And then I was going to put... If there was a second G, I was going to go for pagering. He won't, he won't, as in he won't stop pagering me, if you will. <laughs> if you were being stopped in the 80s, yeah. that was a common sentence. <laughs> OK, oh, Cathy, you're six. I buggered up, I thought there were two eyes. <laughs> OK, what's your seven, John? Well, it's written down, but not, not here. Here I've just written impenetrable. <laughs> <laughs> So what, where that clock tattooed on his back. <laughs> My mum's got count. Well, she realised she had. Uh, <laughs> she only had eight knuckles, so she lost the first O. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> she's got that. And then down tattooed there. So that, that will drive me on. My family watching me. Finally made it. Okay, John, you're um, you're very much known as the boring one on Countdown, which is <laughs> which is quite an achievement in and of itself. But <laughs> do you have a dark side? Can you do the first bit for me again? You're, well, you're known as the, the boring one on Countdown. Am I? Yeah, well, yeah. Am I? That's me. Susie, I'm afraid you've he's been, outdone you. Uh, <laughs> you've been, you've been knocked uh, off your tedious I perch. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the exciting one on Countdown, then? The... <laughs> Captain Danger over there. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're fun. John, you've got kind of an alter ego. You, you know, you, do you have a dark side? Well, um, this is a true story, actually, Jimmy. Only yesterday, I turned right at a junction where it said no right turn. <laughs> and if the authorities of Harrogate are watching, then swivel on that. 
show me the video evidence, in which case I'll climb down immediately and pay any <laughs> fine. <laughs> Uh, Kathy, you appeared on Celebrity Gogglebox. Now, if there were cameras in your actual living room, what, what would we see? Um, well, I'm part of a Baroque chorus, which a lot of people don't realise. So we do that in my living room, because there's really good acoustics in there. A Baroque chorus? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know you could sing. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be doing any singing this evening? No. <laughs> I don't sing publicly. But I do sing privately with my friends from the church. <laughs> There's me thinking John was the boring one. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what you thought I'd say that I have sex in my front room. Is that what you thought? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I had sex in my front room once. <laughs> this is quite a few years ago. This is in the last century. <laughs> <laughs> and it was in the olden days when you had answer machines before we had mobile phones. And I was having sex with this young man in my front room. Ooh, young man. Young man. <laughs> and the phone rang. I didn't want to answer it. I was enjoying myself. <laughs> and it was my agent who said, Kathy, they really need an, an answer whether you're going to be on an audience with Ken Dodd. <laughs> and and that, that's true. That, that happened to me while I was having sex in my while, front room. While there was a tickling stick present. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Did you go on Ken Dodd, an audience with Ken Dodd? I didn't. No, I didn't. I went on Parky, the carpets were filthy. <laughs> John, have you got a mascot this evening? Yes, of sorts, yes. I was going through some old stuff the other day, and what some people don't know this about me, but before I was a comedian, uh, I, I dabbled in magic. Are you a comedian? I didn't know that about you. <laughs> My first trick would be to make my teammate disappear. <laughs> well, did you genuinely used to do magic? Uh, yeah, this is, I used to wear this hat. I, uh, I was known as the impenetrable Rico. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> I brought this along, and I lost my old wand, so I thought, opportunity to make my own wand. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so then, when you're not doing magic, you have a bit of tidy up. <laughs> So I'll, I'll, I'll do a few uh, through the evening, Jimmy. I'll, I'll sprinkle a bit of uh, magic dust uh, about the studio. Uh, Kathy, have you got a mascot? Something to bring you good luck this evening? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. So this is my dog when she was a little baby. Oh, shenanigans. Shenanigans? What a great name. Great name for a dog. Best name ever given to a dog in the history of dog naming. Are you sure? My, yeah. do my dog's called Taxi. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> in the park, I can go, taxi! Yeah, it's very hard. <laughs> I've heard that quite a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is shenanigans. Beautiful. That was when she was about two months, three months. And here she is now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, lost her just before Christmas. She was brilliant. But what was a nightmare about her was she didn't like going on holiday. And she really didn't like coming up north. So I thought, ha ah, ha, see? <laughs> I've got you here now. <laughs> it's not all in there. I think that left paw is the bit that fitted in there. But... <laughs> Tried it as a seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, so sometimes you get, like, a soup and it's too sweet. Mm. This needs a bit of shenanigans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sean, have you got a mascot? <laughs> no, I've got a mascot, but I've got something which I think will make most... I mean, I find my life very dull. I think most people's lives are pretty dull. You get asked questions and they're quite dull. And I've got a way, sort of a way to liven up the dullest questions. For example, if you're in a restaurant and, uh, you know, in an Italian restaurant, the waiter comes over with a big pepper grind, he goes, Pepper, sir, and you just go do this. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> I love it. It just gives everything a sense of tension and excitement to it. You know, if you ask me any question... Any you, are you doing anything nice this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just making...
makes everything seem a lot more exciting. The dullest questions, you know, like where, where's the coleslaw? Well, it should be with the ham, because I put it in there. <laughs> Kevin, and if you don't have a good answer, I have an idea of how we can make it more interesting. Do you have a mascot? Give me some, Sean. Yes, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a mascot. It's a purple disposable lighter. <laughs> and an aerosol can. <laughs> in my experience, when a disposable lighter and an aerosol can are introduced in a game of countdown, it does bring that degree of tension. <laughs> and I think it's something me and Sean could really capitalise on. Mm. And also it could be used in a celebratory way, should mm. we get the conundrum. I would be willing to empty a few clips and fire... <laughs> fire a few rounds off. <laughs> so that's my mascot. Oh, OK. Over in Dictionary Corner, it's Joe Lyson. <laughs> OK, now, Joe, you're from Birmingham. To your credit, you'd never know. <laughs> are there any words or phrases from the Midlands we should be aware of this evening? What are your favourite Midlands phrases? Uh, yes, I don't have the accent, but um, there are a few giveaways. For example, I say tooth rather than tooth. That's quite a brummy thing to say. And my friend from um, Liverpool, she found this very funny, and when she found out every time, she would sort of go, What's that? And I go, It's my tooth. And she'd go, You sound fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's fair. Out of the two of us, I'm the weirdest sounding, defo. <laughs> Joe, you were voted the 57th hottest man in the world by Attitude magazine. Fact. <laughs> yeah, fact, yes. Yes, Attitude magazine is gay literature. I was voted the 57th hottest man in the world by them last year. Brad Pitt is at 60. I'm hotter than Brad Pitt. <laughs> 57th, no. Joe? Yes, I'm 57th hottest. Man, it, how, out of how many? How many men are in the world? Just to really, put this <laughs> in, to really put the man's achievement into context. 57 3 billion. Out of 3 billion? Yeah. Wow. Benedict Cumberbatch is at 69. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, with Joe, of course, it's Susie Dent. <laughs> it says here in the 80s, Susie collected rocks. And there's me thinking that being the resident lexicographer on Countdown was tragic. <laughs> Don't you remember pet rocks? Well, if you couldn't afford a real pet, you had a pet rock. <laughs> John, I said you were the most boring, but it's bloody close. <laughs> Susie, are there any accents you find annoying? Um, well, there was these polls, aren't there, of accents and how intelligent... <laughs> There's always these bloody polls. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 